time. But one thing has stayed consistent. Celebrating 30 years on the air on WROI is the first federal program. Hosts may have changed, but the program is still the same. Now continuing a long-standing tradition, streaming on the first federal Facebook page and on WROI. It's and good morning. It is time for the first federal program, June the 14th. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Andy. Well, welcome everyone today to our can, show. Can you believe it? We're halfway through June already. Halfway through June. Wow. <laughs> Where did it go? Big weekend this weekend. It is a big weekend. Father's Day weekend. Father's Day. Flag Day today. Flag Day. A lot of different things going on. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for the welcome, Randy. We've yes, got glad our, to have you. It's going to be a fun day. We've got a special guest, Brian Johnson, today from the... Community Foundation. Brian's always fun. So he's got uh, tons of information as yep. well. Tanner's going to join us also. So be a great day. Father's Day weekend. Uh, yeah. Go out and hug a father. Call your father if you're still around. Uh, Take him out to eat. Do something. Yeah. Take him golfing. That's that, probably what Tanner's going to do. That's <laughs> probably, <laughs> have him cook the burgers on the barbecue. Yeah, there you so go. There the you burger. go. Flag Day today also. Oh, yes. It's a very important day. Yeah. See the out and about everywhere. Yeah, I see the community has the flags out now. Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to be a trivia question today. Uh oh. Maybe. Don't put the pressure on now. Yeah. I got last week's right. That was a pure guess, so <laughs> come on. No, I, I listened last yeah. week. I wasn't on, but he did a good job. Pretty that. good guess. Yeah. So. yeah. Maybe it's that, that position. That just, <laughs> is that what it is? The, the sub, the, the the sub, sub some board. honors and credibility. Yeah. So, our question today is what year was Flag Day officially established? Ooh. 1916, 1927, 1936, 1949. Wow. All right. Well, I have to answer right that's now. That's a good thing. Brian, you can think about that, <laughs> yeah. too, because we're going to ask you to play. And He's probably a history buff. He'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also the, today's Army birthday day, too. Oh, okay. Army uh, birthday day. Still Army. Thin, Looks like you're taking all my days. <laughs> yeah, all these days. <laughs> we'll, we'll fly through those now. Yeah. <laughs> So, Tanner's here with sports. Yes, good morning. Uh, first, I want to give a, a shout-out. Congratulations on a great season to the Rochester High School baseball team. Uh, they won the first of what ended up being two semi-state games last week in an exciting fashion. It was. Tanner Reinertz with a two-run walk-off home walk run. That's, that's, yeah. that's classic. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty legendary. That will go down yeah. in the Rochester uh, archives. Oh, definitely. Athletics archives as a, as a great moment. Uh, they end up, unfortunately, losing the, in the semi-state championship. Is still a great season. I mean, to make the Final Four, get farther along than any previous Rochester baseball team ever has. Yeah. And they're a young team. They're, they're, they're still young. So, Graduated a lot in six seniors, right, but right. overall, still a pretty young team. A lot right. of returners. Exactly. And, and, you know, you know, I see on Facebook and things of tons of uh, younger players coming up in yeah. the youth ranks. Yeah. And I think, I think Rochester's got some good uh, – Building blocks yeah. that are established for the future. So well, Rochester, well. Rochester Youth Baseball is a good feeder. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it yeah. takes yeah. for yeah. some yeah. high school sports to oh, excel. Yeah. And Rochester Youth Baseball does a great job of being a feeder. Well, especially now with how the landscape is and with, with private and public yeah. schools and everything. And well, we can have a whole radio show I, I on that. That's so we're not going to about that. Two or three radio shows. But, uh, but yeah, it is, so for, these, for the, a lot of public schools, it is about the feeder system, absolutely. Yeah. So, congratulations to Corey Good and staff and all the players yeah. for the Zebras. A very exciting season. NBA Finals, NBA season could wrap up tonight. The Celtics have a 3 0 lead over the Mavericks with game four tonight in Dallas. It's at 8 30 on ABC. Dallas is a one and a half point favorite. That's basically just because they're the home team. Um, they have to stop crawling into huge deficits if they want any chance. I mean, the other night they get way behind. Didn't get out on a 27-6 run to get right back into it. Then Luka Doncic gets a sixth foul, fouls out with three minutes left, and they kind of yeah. went all the hope out the window there. So, so everybody kept saying six, but yeah, it, it, I think it wraps up tonight. Yeah. I just it's mid June. It's about time. It is about time. <laughs> if it went seven, it would go clear up into the week of the NBA draft. Oh really? Yes, yeah, because that's later this month. Yeah. So. And just before the Olympics start. Oh yeah, they know they knew what they were doing with the scheduling, but it still uh, just seems like base or baseball. Well, baseball goes on forever too. But yeah, basketball, they're trying, hockey. They're trying to keep up with yeah, baseball. Basketball, <laughs> hockey, the postseason's go on forever. Yeah. Hockey's at a three-zero 
deficit now as the uh, Florida Panthers have a 3 0 lead for the Edmonton Oilers. And Canvas thinking, what do we got to do to get a Stanley Cup? It's been since 1993 wow. since a Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup, wow. which just doesn't feel right. Because yeah, they, how many did they win in a row? Oh, there, you know? tons. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they, they kind of. That, that sport means more to them. Yeah, than it's the first place in hockey, yeah. yeah, North America. At least. Yeah, so and Florida's never won one, so it looks like they're probably going to. But if if I had to predict for them, yeah, I think the Celtics wrap it up tonight. They are the better team. They might not have the best player, even though they have two really good players. Um, I think they're overall just too deep and too talented. In the golf world. Uh, the uh, third of the four major championships got underway yesterday with uh, the first round of the U.S. Open at Pinehurst number two. They have nine of those. That's why it's called number two <laughs> in North Carolina. Uh, some big names towards the top of the leaderboard. Patrick Cantlay, who's a big name for American golf. He's tied with Rory McIlroy, who's a big name around the golf world. They're at five under par right now at the top. But a lot of guys still in contention. And today I think we're going to see some separation. Yeah. I think... Uh, Day number two usually I th- does. I think the, the USGA is setting up the course a little more difficult today than they did yesterday. Well, typically, I mean, five under par is a pretty low score. It absolutely is. Because, you know, they got, like, ankle high rough, knee yeah. high rough. And, yep. you know, Greens are just ridiculous. So well, this, if you're like me, I'm used to playing in that rough. Oh, anyway, yeah, me so. too, me too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they want the score to be close to even par after right. the four days. I. I think five under right now, I think that could be the winning score come Sunday. I don't think we're going to see anybody go way too low. And yeah. I saw on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, this morning that the USGA tweeted something out about the pin sheets. Yeah. And the guy who said them was laughing because he said, I guarantee you at least one person puts in the bunker on hole three today. Ooh. He said, well, a pin so close to the edge that <laughs> if wow. somebody misses, it could go off the green <laughs> into the bunker. I may have done that before. Oh, yeah. 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 That yeah, will be we probably all happen this year. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But so that's gonna be fun. That's not normal. Keep an eye on it, <laughs> and we'll see if Tiger Woods makes a cut. He's four over par, played okay at times yesterday, other times and struggled. So yeah. we'll see if his body can hold up. I think that's the main question. With yeah. that. Tough course. Will there be any weather issues with it? I haven't checked that. Yeah, out. the forecast looks pretty good, and, it, and I think they're gonna avoid the wind. I think that was the one thing the players were worried about. They're saying this course is tough enough if the wind gets going. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to lose the course. But it's always kind of a fun event to watch. It is. It is fun to see the pros struggle and look like yeah. us everyday uh, amateur golfers. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fun I to see the back I've done that before. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of makes me so good about yeah. myself. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I think I saw a highlight last night from somebody on, like, one side of the green, chip out of the, the bunker, and ended up in the bunker on yep. the other side of the green. Yep. I think a couple guys did that yesterday. <laughs> so, there, yeah, there's some nasty places there, but it's... It's, it's fun to watch, and the spectators said it's a great course to, uh, to watch an event at. We actually have a first federal family member that's going to play that course in August. Oh, really? It's not yeah. myself. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, but it's, yeah, somebody else. Since we're talking about golf, might yeah. just throw a shout out to the JA today. Yeah, the uh, Junior Achievement of Fulton County is having their annual golf outing uh, today out at the Round Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek. Uh, registration and breakfast is at 8, and then the tee house at 9. So they always put on a good event, so. Just get stretched out and ready to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, got to get stretched out and help our first federal savings bank team. Hopefully we can hopefully we can play well today. Good so. luck. <laughs> good luck to JA. Yes, good yes, they do a great job. And lastly, for sports, MLB standings. Uh, Yankees still holding on top to the AL East, even though the Baltimore Orioles are right on their heels. The Yankees are at a record of 49-22. and 22. So That tells you the Orioles have a pretty good record going on, too. Uh, the AL Central... Cleveland Guardians, still one of the best stories in baseball this year. They're at the top of that division with a 43-23 and 23 record. Kansas City Royals, another good story. They're right behind them with a 40-30 record. Then you got the Detroit Tigers in fourth with a 33-35 and 35 record. Then the White Sox, <laughs> I don't even know what to They're say right. about the White Sox anymore. 18-52 right now. But you know what? The sad part is, when you flip to the NL, there's one down there in the same city oh, that yeah. is uh, catching yeah, them pretty yeah. quickly. The Cubs down rivalry for the bottom this year. Yeah, yeah. the Cubs swept the White Sox well, a week or two ago. Uh, the Cubs are 33 and 36. They're not in last of the NL Central. They're barely ahead of Pittsburgh. So it's kind of jumbled right there. The Reds are 33 and 35, so they're just above the Cubs. Then the Cardinals are at 33 and 34, in second place in that division. Then you got the Brewers at 40 and 28, kind of. 
sleepwalking through the division. Yeah, right now. it's not hard to do in that no, division. No, so. <laughs> but uh, Cubs aren't, like I told Todd before we started recording, they're not out of the wild card by any means right now. The whole NL is kind of jumbled mess. That's Even though scary. they've lost eight of the last nine series, yeah, the only series they would have won would have been the White Sox. Sox. Yeah. Maybe they could play them every weekend. <laughs> I think they would sign up for that if they could. So, a lot of baseball left, but we're only in the middle of June. Yeah, so. crazy. Got some tidbits here this morning. Todd kind of alluded to this earlier on this day. In 1775, the U.S. Army first formed as the Continental Army to fight in the American Revolutionary War. So happy birthday to the Army. Yes. On this day, 1922, U.S. President Warren G. Harding became the first U.S. President to use the radio. Uh -huh. He dedicated the Francis Scott Key Memorial in Baltimore. Cool. On the state 18 or 1989, excuse me, the groundbreaking began on the Mall of America. <laughs> Ever been there? I have not been there. I, I've you seen not? pictures, yeah. but Brian, no. nope, that's over that's four. Amusement, this amusement parking or yeah, yeah a a roller coaster at least at one time. It's uh, no, my my wife wants to get there someday. Maybe maybe that's a trip we'll have to do. I'm, I'm not a huge shopper, but I think it would be neat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's probably a putt putt in there. It probably yeah. is. So that would be cool to see, I think. It's uh, it's uh, pretty crazy to sight to see online. Yeah. On this day, 1996, the movie Cable Guy was released with Jim Carrey. Okay. Still it's find it. that on TV now and then. It's a good one. On this day, in uh, 2002, The Born Identity was released in the U.S. Of course, that went on to be a whole series of movies. <laughs> On this day in 2015, Jurassic World became the first film to make $500 million worldwide in its opening weekend. That has since been surpassed by a handful of movies in yeah. film life. And on this day in 2021, I didn't know about this one, that's kind of interesting. Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, a world famous soccer player, removed spot, uh, his sponsor's Coke bottles from his press table at the European Championships. That prompted the company's share price to drop four billion dollars. Wow, be pretty important. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> to have an impact on Coke. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. yeah. wouldn't think it'd be that big impact. Yeah. It shows their soccer's worldwide yeah. influence yeah. and dominance. Yep. I mean, billion, not million. Billion would yeah. be that was That's pretty eyebrow raising. raising. Yeah. And got some days to go over today's World Blood Donor Day. Always, always a good thing to donate blood. National New Mexico Day. Ever been to New Mexico? I have. No, I think so. I that might be one state I don't have on the list. I, I have know. been there. So Randy's the only one in the room that's been there. National Movie Night. It's a good, good night to watch a movie. National Flag Day. Also the Army's birthday. National Strawberry Shortcake Day. Can't go wrong there. No, you can't. <laughs> National Bourbon Day. National Cupcake Day. And International Bath Day. You can loosely tie those almost all yeah, in together. Yeah, right? you, know, you could. You check could. out a movie, have the shortcake, have, a have some bourbon, have, have a cupcake, bourbon, yeah. make a, a bourbon, bath before that. Bourbon flavored cupcake. Oh, yeah. Or infused, maybe. maybe there you infused, go. Infused, maybe not flavored. Yeah. And blood donor day, it's always good yep. to get blood better, You probably should do that before you have yeah. the, the uh, bourbon or the cake. Yeah, yeah you probably should. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah donate yeah, blood yeah, first. Yeah, do the blood first. Get the sugar out. There at the Red Cross Service area, I just checked. Uh, there's not any coming up in the next couple of weeks, but later in July, uh, yeah. there's one at the hospital and there's one at the St. Joseph Parish Hall. All right. So, so, your, so your prediction done today? NBA, NBA done is done tonight. NHL right. will be done this weekend. I think it's sweep of both. Who wins the golf? Put you on the spot. I'm going with uh, I'm going with Bryson DeChambeau. Okay. Uh, yeah. He was playing at the end of the day. Yep, yep, yeah. and he's played well in the Masters, the PGA Championship, finished top 10 of both, I think. He'll be right there. There you so. go. All right. We have some upcoming events coming up soon. Yeah, the Moose Lodge is holding their opening of the lake event tomorrow at noon, and I understand Deborah is going to be there. No, they, they, they changed it. Changed yeah. it, okay. Yeah, they changed it. Nope. Excuse me. Nope, you're fine. Uh, but that's going to include the boat parade, uh, 2,500 draw drawing, live music, and food trucks. So. Yeah. It's always a fun, fun time. Fun for the family. Yeah, yeah, that's the key right there. Family. family. You know, you can yes. have family fun center. Exactly. Like, uh, take the whole family. Related to that, I also saw the Lake Manitou Association's mm -hmm. doing a Duck Derby Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, new tomorrow. Yeah. You can Dropping all the ducks in. Right. So you can check that out on their website. Yeah. I think it's still probably time to get a duck. I think you can do it up until uh, 
11 o'clock or something tomorrow. It's a fun so. day in the lake. It's going to be a beautiful day, mm -hmm. it looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't, don't want to be in the water, probably. It's going <laughs> yes, to be warm. It's okay. starting to get steamy up there. Uh, Dreddy's Place in Arlington Public House will be holding a dine and donate event, including a biscuits and gravy breakfast on Sunday, June 23rd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. with free will donations going towards Joe's Hope and Fulton County Habitat for Humanity. Great breakfast. Yes. So they've been doing these the last yeah. couple months. Um, we went to one a few months ago. It was good turnout, uh, good breakfast, uh, yep. Sunday morning. Yep. Help with good cause. And, and I should note, this is also going to be sponsored by Maltieri Baker. It's great. Yeah, so, okay. yep, a new bakery in town. Seem like they're doing a great job. So, yeah. yeah if you want to check out, we had Deanna on the show. Yes, we did. Uh, right March before she, yeah, 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 about a month before yeah. she opened. So. so, check out YouTube yep. for that if you want to see some information about the bakery. Yep. And the Civic Players of Logan Sports is going to be presenting We Will Rock You, a musical by Queen and Ben, El ben Elton, on uh, June 21st, 22nd, and 28th at 7 30 p.m., and on June 29th at 3.30 p.m. That's going to be at the State Theater in Logansport. Funeral admission seating is $15. Tickets can be purchased at the door or online at civics, civicplayersoflogansport.weebly.com. Great. That's a great upcoming event. Yeah. So. And also coming up tomorrow, and because I'll have the interview, replay the interview today, uh, Greggy and the Jets at right. the Times Theater oh, yes. tomorrow night. Uh, and Elton John. And Elton John, too. Boy. He, they are energetic. I talked to them uh, on uh, Wednesday. I'll replay that during the trading post today. But, man, those guys, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town tomorrow. I'd love to go. But they're, that, you're going to bring some energy tomorrow night? If you got tickets, that, you'll, yeah. I think you'll enjoy that one. So that's tomorrow night. Okay. Grady and the Jets. Good Elton John tribute. Yeah. yeah. Great. Money news. Dow is down slightly to 38,647. Marks the third day of losses. The Federal Reserve didn't take the opportunity to reduce, did not take the yeah. opportunity to reduce rates. General investor thinking is there's still one or two coming, maybe September. We'll see. And also they're just watching inflation. Inflation improves very slightly, 3.3% down from 3.4%. Uh, it is what it, it is. It is what it is. It is. It just deal with it, right? Yeah, they're, government's going to do what they want to do. So banks open this weekend, of course, today, tomorrow. Uh, we're open from 8.30 to 5 today, tomorrow 8.30 to noon. Uh, we still have some great CD specials. We've changed it up a little bit now. There's a six-month CD at 5.10% annual percentage yield, a 12-month CD at 4.84% annual percentage yield. Those are great rates compared to the most recent five, six years, seven years mm -hmm. of, of history. So uh, if you're interested in making your money earn more for you, uh, come check us out. I talk to Terry Ward or Mindy Mars at the Rochester office or Suzanne Pugh at Winamap. I'd be happy to help you out. We still offer free checking accounts. We say that every week. That is something kind of unusual anymore in banking. We have a personal account or a business checking account. Uh, when you open a new checking account, you get a free gift. And ta-da, we have a new Yeah, I, I forgot to bring it in with me. I'll have to bring it in next week. But it's a 45-can thermal tote. Wow. And when these say they can fit 45 cans, I've tested it. They can fit 45 cans. <laughs> That's a lot of cans. It's a lot of cans. It's soda, it's pop, and water, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's a little heavy, but... Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, who wants to carry it? <laughs> yeah, it's got to throw it literally over your shoulder a little yeah. bit, but... Well, yeah. Good workout for me, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we offer, also offer commercial lending for business. Contact Lindy Breeden. You can also contact Mark Blue, Bob, Ryan Bell, again, for financial services. Uh, if you have any questions about the stock market or your 401k, IRAs, they'd be happy to help you out. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on X, Instagram, LinkedIn, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines. We are FDIC insured. An equal housing lender, and our MLS number is 399927. And now we can officially get started with our guest. Yeah, Brian's kind of an old uh, He's an standby old for us. <laughs> like a bad thing to keep coming back. Didn't mean old I feel out of, out of place here. You got, I, I didn't get the red memo. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned Brian, Nebraska Red, Todd's IU Red, so yeah. kind of covered, and uh, you're supporting the blue, 
Blue Devils or something like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you said Blue Devils well, instead of the other blue and you could have said. Maybe that's being a local butler. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, welcome, Brian. Thanks uh, for We're glad me. you're here. Uh, you have lots of radio appearances. I know the Foundation has a own radio show yeah. also. Uh, but you're always a great guest here, and there's always lots going on at the yeah. Community Foundation. And Definitely. Why don't you, uh, Brian is, for our audience that doesn't know, the Director of Development at the Fulton County Community Foundation. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? I've been there about 16 years. That's now, awesome. So, um, it's, it's a great thing. We have a lot of great things that we get to be a part of and help support in the community because we have donors that have made an impact and continue to make an impact. Got a lot of things going on. Um, a, a few things that we have going on right now: um, scholarships. Say congratulations to the class of 2024. Um, we've been able to participate in some scholarship awards nights. Um, thanks to our donors, give out over two hundred and thirty thousand dollars in scholarships. Awesome. That's got to be a pretty uh, big number for a community the size. Of it is. It is. We have a really generous community compared to other size communities and. I get to see examples of that every day. So thank you to everybody who's been a part of that. Uh, talking about scholarships, we do have some scholarships. We call them summer scholarships because that's when we advertise them, but geared more towards current college students or potentially returning college students. Some things like uh, the Frederick Wright Straw Law Scholarship of support students studying for a law degree. Um, Ginger Miller Higher Education, Ginger was involved um, as an early board member of the Community Foundation and the scholarship in her honor um, helps support graduate students. Um, we do have a, a f familiar name in the community, Phillips Brahman Scholarship. Um, if you've ever been to a Rochester athletic event in the last 10 years, you've probably met Marjorie Phillips, <laughs> um, was a faithful ticket taker. Um, she also enjoyed supporting that school called Purdue. Um, <laughs> so that's for students from Rochester who have completed at least one year at Purdue. Um, all those applications are available on our website. So and that's our still scholarship dollars available still scholarship for the next dollars. school year. Right? Yes, yes, for, for the coming school year. So if you're a current college student or looking to go back to grad school or law school, check those out. Um, NICF.org, you can find the applications on there. And if you have questions, Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator, is always happy to help with them. So. And if you're a high school senior or know of a high school senior coming up this fall, yes. check out that website because there's lots yeah. of opportunities out Pay there. Pay attention. There's probably a scholarship that you'll qualify for. So, mm -hmm. um, that's that's a, a part of what we do. Another part of what we get to do is support um, community projects and organizations uh, through our community funds. Um, we've been talking about this for a while, Lily Endowment. We're so grateful. They have given us the opportunity to match some funds. Um, so we get $2 for, from Lily Endowment for every dollar donated locally for community funds. So let me get this right. I'm, I'm yeah. not a graduate, but I'm yes. also a banker. If I give, okay. give a we dollar, trust your math skills. if I give a dollar, the foundation has $3 basically yep. to work with. Lily, Lily matches your dollar with two of their dollars, and then we have $3 to give out in grants. Um, we They did put a cap on that, so you can't keep putting zeros on it at some point they'll say that's too much but um, we have three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that we're trying to raise locally Lily endowment will match that with seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of their funds that's a million dollars that's a little over a million for our community for our community and the neat thing about that is that then turns into about fifty thousand dollars extra every year that we can grant out to needs in our community. That's awesome. So it's really neat when we when we sit down as a committee or as a board and look around the community and say these are things that are needed. You'll be hearing in the in the next few weeks um, some grants that were recently made. Um, this last um, a couple weeks ago we were able to celebrate one of the more significant grants we made um, out at Richland Restoration Nature Park. And we had an event out there and I was surprised at the number of people that said we had no idea that this park was even here. Or if they'd been to the dog park, if you've been out there, there's kind of a row of trees, and unless you've gone past the row of trees, you have no idea that there's some pretty cool pavilions and walking paths and, and just a really neat space. So that's examples of where those community fund dollars have gone. Um, 
we have through the end of 2025 to raise those dollars. That being said, of our $375,000 goal, we're already over $210,000 with that into it. So, so mid-year 2024, you're well yeah. on the way to we're, meeting We're over halfway there, so I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be there by the end of this year. Um, we have a very generous matching. community, so it is. take that $1 into 3 yeah. the $100 yeah. into $300, yes. and just do the math from there on. And, and it turns into good things for our community. Like I said, an additional $50,000 every year. Uh, this year we have about $275,000 in community funds that we can make grants. Um, and so add that on, and, and every year it seems like we we just get so many good requests, so many good projects, and not only is our community generous with their donations of financial assets, but also of time. We get to sit down and look at all these volunteers making a huge impact, and um, we'd love to be able to support things like that. You mentioned the theater earlier. That's one that we've been supporting on a, on a regular basis, and really great addition to our community. And that's kind of seed money that's helping Times Theater become self-supporting, yes. self-sustaining. That's our goal. Yeah. And we're well on our path to getting there. Yeah. It's, it's but they need to start. So they need to start. And that's that's where these dollars a lot of times help good people do good things and get projects off the ground and, and help them turn into something really amazing. So if somebody doesn't know very much about the foundation, I know yeah. they do a lot in the community, what's the best tool to get them more information or understanding the website website um, nicf.org we also have a press uh, presence on facebook um, northern indiana community foundation so fulton county is part of a three county association fulton miami and stark counties um, they so we have a presence in all three of those communities um, you'll see information about the things that we're doing throughout all three of those communities pop up. And, and just a little plug, we have a couple of interns working this summer. Um, so keep an eye on our Facebook page for some fun contests. We're doing a scavenger hunt right now. Let's so, put you on the spot, though. What interns' names? So we have Delaney Strasser. This is Delaney's second year, and you mentioned Butler. <laughs> Butler student. And then we have Madeline Calloway. And I apologize, Madeline. I can't remember the name of your school. So we'll get. We'll, Sorry, I didn't we'll, put you on spot. Yeah. But you um, have some radio show yes. coming up where you can correct. Yes. Yeah. So, well, and they'll actually be on with us at the uh, end of July. Yes. That's one thing we always try and do. So, um, listen for the ladies um, towards the end of July for the community foundation program. But um, they've been doing some fun things, um, a scavenger hunt. So, check out uh, Northern Indiana Community Foundation on Facebook. There may or may not be some prizes involved in this as well, some fun things. So we're in the second week of that, so check that out as well. Of the many things the foundation does great, they're very enthusiastically supporting interns. You've had some really yes, strong and, interns. Yes, and that's really another continued support from Lily and Dallin. They've helped provide um, the opportunity for us to have some college students. We actually have had a couple of interns that have interned with us in the past come back to work for us. And that's one of the goals is, is providing the opportunity to learn about what the world of philanthropy does and how it makes an impact in our community. So it's, it's been a really great program and a benefit for us, a benefit for the students that have participated in that. And it's really amazing when you, when you see young people and get them involved and the ideas they come up with and the energy that they bring, we're very fortunate to have I say we have the best interns, and I'm not bragging on that, I think we do. I've been so. in numerous communities in Indiana, and to me it seems like the Fulton County Community Foundation is one of the strongest community foundations I've seen, and congratulations on everybody that works there and what they do, yeah. and as we wrap up, uh, what are some closing thoughts and ideas you'd like to share about the foundation? Well, I think um, the biggest thing is with the foundation. It gives the opportunity to have local needs addressed locally. We don't have to depend on outside organizations. I mean, you think about a lot of times when you submit a grant application, you may be competing against other organizations throughout the state or the nation. Um, what happens here is we have local people that are working on these projects, local people that have donated, and local people that 
make the decision on where this funding goes. So it, it's really neat to see that opportunity where we can have people that know the community, know what's important. You, you hear about a lot of great projects and think, those are all great ideas. But if you have somebody that's in the community, that lives here, that works here, that knows the community, they can say, those are all great ideas, but right now this is really important. Mm -hmm. And so that's, we're really blessed to have that opportunity and knowing that those dollars are going to be spent here in Fulton County and impact, um, impact the community on a daily basis. I think that's really the beauty of community foundations and also the aspect of you don't have to be independently wealthy. We talk about $210,000 in community funds. That's hundreds of donors literally have made those contributions to bring us up to that total. So it's not like I have to donate a significant amount of the state or a corporate yeah. that, that's welcome, yeah. but things like Over that. Over 80% of our donations that come in are $100 or less. And all those added together make up the community foundation and make it possible for those significant dollar amounts. So it's it's really accessible for the common person. So local money, local leadership, local decisions, and local input. Yes, definitely. That's, that's a great way to state it. Great. So... Trivia time. Uh -oh. Flag day. 1916, 1927, 1936, or 1949. The question is, what day did flag day officially get established? I'm going to say 36. 1936. I was, was going to say 16. The answer is 1949, but it is oh. kind of confusing because neither one was President Wilson in 1916 and President Coolidge in 1927 issued proclamations uh, for Flag Day, but it wasn't until after Congress in 1949 that it was approved for national observance, and President Harry Truman signed it into law. So, I feel like we should get partial credit. Partial <laughs> <laughs> so we'll close with some words of wisdom, uh, kind of related to the foundation of the concept. It's from Cahal Gibran, a Lebanese poet, Generosity is giving more than you can, and pride is taking less than you need. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us, and uh, we'll be back again next Friday morning. Happy Father's Day. Yes. Have a great weekend, everybody.